YouTubers, this is Nurse J at Nursing the Truth, and I hope everyone's having a great day today. So, I don't have Thoth with me, um, so I'm just going to kind of go through this by myself. He's on the other side of the room, and I'm kind of having a lazy day today, sitting in my chair meditating and having peace and quiet. So, today, uh, I was thinking about some things that I wanted to talk to you guys about. First of all, we have to quit fear-mongering and we have to quit living in fear because that is what entities and things feed off of us when we have fear. If you can face fear and you battle fear and you overcome fear, then you have mastered it all. So don't be afraid, my true seekers, Gnostics and pagans alike. All that has come out of Christianity and the dogma of the mind trap matrix. People that are believing in these King James Bibles. Now there are some truths and there are some lies. There are some things to take out of it that are good. A lot of things do come from Egypt and uh, Samaria in these um, Bibles, especially the Proverbs and Psalms and things of that nature. Um, but you know, if the Judeo-Christian people are going to live by this book and they will put their lives on the line and they will die for this, um, then we have a problem. As we know, the whole kit and caboodle started with Akhenaten, with him being the Moses character and him only wanting to serve Aten, the single disc, and get rid of all the other gods, if, if you will say that, which are representations of the nature of the universal cosmos. Now, so since we got that out of the way, um, he was heretical. He was nuts in the head. Um, and so out of this line was the Levites. Okay. And your Sadducees and stuff like that. Now, that starts your Judeo uh, Judaism. So now your other countries like Babylon and Assyria and all that kind of stuff, they had their own religious rites um, and their ways of doing things and their gods. And we have to understand about these gods, these demigods, these were actual walking and talking people that were on the earth with men. You have to do your research and go back all the way to the Anunnaki gods that the Sumerians wrote about. These gods had temples in the very beginning in Meso, America, um, uh, you know, Egypt, Iraq, Indus Valley. Um, but the very first ones were called your ziggurats, okay, in Babylon, um, where you would have Enlil um, and his gang, the Nurta, so go look all that up. That's on Wikipedia and all that, okay? So from the offshoot of this Akhenaten Moses, okay, and all that, then we got into the Christianity part of it, um, which really Christianity did not get going until after the Roman Empire made it the law and to only be a Christian nation. Now, well, what we have to understand is that really there were people writing about these things. Now, if you're gonna go by Josephus and what he wrote in the Antiquities of the Jews saying that, oh, you know, there's this guy named Jesus that was called the Christ, it was James' brother, that was an interpolation. And that's been figured out hundreds of years ago that this was a fraudulent, 
interpolation by Eusebius of Caesarea, which was Constantine's historian and sat at the Council of Nicaea. So preachers, get off your pulpits and quit spouting this lie because I've heard it myself. And because I know the history and I looked you in the face and told you that I liked history too, you about made me want to puke. Because in the computer, it tells you that this was horseshit. So, preacher man, I hope you watch my videos. Because one day you will come across me. So, anyway, with that being said... Your earliest writers even said that the Essenes were your first Christians. Now, what you have to understand is that the Essenes um, that were called your first Christians were Gnostics. And these are kind of like a therapeutic, kind of Epicurean um, sect that were white linen and used healing herbs and incantations and um, helped the community, and um, they had their own rituals and baptisms and all that kind of good stuff, and they came from Egypt, and they were initiated into the mysteries. Now, I will also tell you that the Gnostics did not, hear me out completely, people, did not think that Jesus was a real man. They knew that the Christ was within you and that you had the spark of the divine. Look it up. So if you Christians are going to go literally by the book and live word for word, are you going to read it literally or are you going to follow this Jesus? Now, if we want to go by what Jesus says, which all of India and that part of the world already knew this information, guys. Did you know the Essenes had universities? and learning centers way before the first century. They were bringing their doctrine from India to Judea. And one of the people that is a real historical character is called Apollonius of Tyana. And he set up a lot of schools and churches in Asia Minor which is modern day Turkey, and he was at Ephesus, Galatia, Corinth. It, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? That sounds like a Paul, because in Latin, Paul turns into Paul, English. Go read about him. Philostratus, I believe in the second or third century, um, wrote about him because he had documents that were given to him, okay, through an emperor's uh, family member, Julia, I believe. And I'm halfway finished with reading that book. And you can get that free online. Called The Life of Apollonius of Tyana. And they do have statues of this man. So let's turn to our handy dandy Bibles and let's go to Matthew 6. And 20, let's go with that. And it says, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So basically, you have a temple, right? And the altar is within the temple. And that's where God resides. 
And he's saying that way up for yourselves in heaven where nothing can be corrupted. Okay? Because your treasure, there will be your heart also. The Egyptians were very fond of of the heart and when they did the mummification process they did not take the heart out because they knew that the heart was a very divine thing and you think with your heart right so you the first thing you do is you think about what your heart says not what your mind says but what your heart says Number 22, verse 22 says, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. So this is the eye, the pineal gland, the third eye, which has always been studied in India and that part of the world. So he's saying that then I be single, then the whole body shall be full of light. If your pineal gland is open and you're enlightened and you can see through this illusion and hear from God, hear the voice, then there's nothing to worry about. Why do we worry? We shouldn't worry. So let's go to, oh, one more thing. Let's go to verse 23, and it says, But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. And if, dark, and if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Okay, so if it is dark, you cannot see through your pineal gland. You can't see things that are coming. And it's just like in the dark. Can you really see when you're walking around at night? Unless you have that little bit of light that can guide you through. Use that metaphor. Okay. Now, let's go to Luke. Chapter 17 and 20. And I don't know how many times I've had to go over this. See, before we get to this verse, the Christians are looking for all these prophecies and all these things that are supposed to happen, the clouds are busting open, Perseus, the white horse is flopping in the air, you're gonna have all these angels coming down, and you're supposed to see Jesus in the clouds coming with great glory and power, with the sash, king of kings and lord of lords dripping with blood. Really? Hmm, that sounds unusual. And he's going to rule with an iron fist. Does that sound pretty to you? Not to me. That doesn't sound pretty at all. Actually, that sounds kind of apocalyptic. So, that's what we're supposed to be looking for. And we're supposed to be thinking that all the graves are going to bust open. And we're going to be flying up in the damn air in our bodies with our clothes on. Okay? And that all these tribulations are supposed to happen, you know, before the rapture and all this other kind of stuff. But guys, <laughs> I've got to tell you this. This is not going to happen. That was given as a Jesuit doctrine during the Protestant and the Catholic Reformation. In Revelation, the Catholic Church is supposed to be the beast and the Antichrist. And 
Francisco Ribera was the Jesuit priest, bishop, whatever you want to call him, that wrote a 500-page, I believe, uh, document book about this. You can go and Google this, and it tells you about it. He lied about the Third Temple. He lied about the vision of Daniel. He um, lied about the 70 weeks. He had to write something that would refute what Martin Luther was saying. And they added a lot in this. So all of this stuff has been made up. And so with this New World Order, they have made things to go with the plan of the Bible. Now, not to say that some of the writings could have been original or whatever, talking about different things that could happen to the earth, as in Nibiru, which was Wormwood, Planet X. There will be, I believe, a catastrophic event um, that NASA is hiding. We're getting sprayed in the skies. But every cycle, okay, every zodiacal cycle comes every 25,000 years, and the earth is destroyed, and it's renewed again. There's nothing new under the sun. You cannot do anything new. How can you do anything new when everything has been completed? It's completion of a cycle. Things come and go. You, you get to the top. You get destroyed. You go back to the bottom. Okay? So what is this Jesus character saying, real or not real? Okay? Because there's lots of Jesuses that were historical that were wrote, written about. And we'll have another video about that. But this mysticist thing is one thing. So let's go to Luke 17 and verse 20. And he's talking to the Pharisees. Okay, and the Pharisees are talking to him. And he says, Pharisees says, And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation. You cannot see it, and you cannot look at it. Neither shall they say, look here, look there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto the disciples, the days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they say to you, see here or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of one part under heaven shineth under the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. So, Bible thumpers, like I used to be, and I never knew about this um, quote. It is an Egyptian proverb, by the way. And that's the same proverb that Egyptians told man... Know thyself, for that when you find it, then you shall know who you are. You are God. And this is a Gnostic view, a Gnosticism view. And Judaism had spread out to so many different factions. There, guys, there's over 50 different Judaist sects and lots, lots of Gnostic sects. You have to study that on your own. Um, and he's telling you. There's not going to be any signs. 
the disciples are like, when's the kingdom come? And see, they were, in one sense, in the first century, there was this, quote, prophecy, which, you know, prophecies, you know how they come and go. Man, write these things for the next generation. Okay. Just like Ezekiel got some prophecies wrong, Jeremiah got some prophecies wrong, Daniel got some prophecies wrong, and that's all verifiable tale called failed prophecies. So if this really was the word of God, then they wouldn't fail. Point blank. So if these prophecies were real, as in the first century, they had this thing called the star prophecy. And because the writings from 500 years prior was saying that there was going to be a Messiah that was going to take the yoke off of the Jews and during the Roman period. So you had lots of people that were bidding for this Messiahship. And they're all written in Josephus' Antiquities of the Jews. And they all died. If there was a prophecy given to man by God, and God comes in the form of flesh in a man, first of all, you can't kill the most powerful entity in the world. Number one. Number two, why would he want to kill himself to go back up to himself? Because if you're going to go by the Old Testament scriptures and listen to this entity, he says, he, she says, whatever it is, says that you cannot atone for someone else. And we'll get into that. So let's go to Thessalonians 2, 2 and see what it says about the kingdom. Thessalonians 2, 2. Okay, now we just, I just went over with you that this Jesus, or whoever it was, or whatever, who or what, or writings or what, says that the kingdom is not coming with observation. You're not going to see jack shit coming out of nowhere. The kingdom is within yourself. And let your third eye be open, full of light and not darkness. And it will guide you. Nobody else is going to save you. Nobody else is going to do nothing for you. But 2 Thessalonians 2 says, well, let's go to verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. The coming of Jesus, the Lord, and he's coming, and the day of Christ is at hand. Do you see the conflicts of this? All the ancients knew that the kingdom 
was in, was in yourself. Who knew this? I think Egyptians knew it. And this is a lot of Egyptian Gnostic, Gnosticism. And I'm going to make a video about the different Jesuses in the first century and what Josephus had to say about them. Because it is a lie. And I'll leave you on this note, my dear truth seekers. In your Catholic encyclopedia, it states that the testimonium flavium which Josephus wrote was heavily interpolated. So there, true seekers and Gnostics and pagans alike, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope this has been informative. And to let you know that the Christ consciousness that is within yourself you are the Christs, and ye are gods. And let your eye be full of light to help you see through the darkness. And do not be afraid and conquer fear itself, and the truth shall set you free. Hoshea, a tip, and we'll see you later.